The search for locally created art is a passion for many people. And one of the best places to find it is in Gatlinburg. Actually, it's an area just beyond the city. And as Laura Faber shows us, it's a step back in time where everything is handcrafted. There is a lot of history in the dark blue and green hills of the Smoky Mountains. History that has migrated down the mountain. Nestled on an eight mile loop at the base of the park outside Gatlinburg is a community that draws visitors from all over the world. Shop after shop, you'll find artists, some of whom come from families who have lived in these parts for generations. The early artists came from the mountains, moved into Gatlinburg to make money from their handcrafted items, but settled just outside the city in an area known as the Glades. It's here that you can find the Great Smoky Arts and Crafts Community, the largest artisan center in the country. When they had the World's Fair in Knoxville, that brought a lot of visitors to East Tennessee. I think that more prominently pushed a spotlight on the mountains um, and Gatlinburg in general. They actually had millions of visitors come into the area from the World's Fair. I mean, that would have pushed the artisan idea a little bit more, this quiet side that you could kind of get away from the hustle and bustle of everything downtown. Now 80 years old, the community has grown to more than 100 artists and craftsmen who have shops along the loop. Woods Hippensteel is a ninth generation artist here. He paints, as does his dad Vern, whose work has been collected here since the 60s. This community represents the cultural side of Gatlinburg. The National Park Service does do a, a fair job of teaching people about the people that actually, you know, are from this area, the, the first established people in this area. But the fact that Gatlinburg, you know, it doesn't represent the people of Gatlinburg as much as the arts and crafts community does. This represents what the people were like before modernization, the people that, that use their hands to make a living. Since 1976, Otto Presky has been making his living with his hands here on the Great Smoky Arts and Crafts Loop. This is a mountain man mental. It, uh, this is basswood, and it's just uh, a different mantle because it's hanging down from, from the mantle part instead of being above it. At 79 years old, he uses tools to shape and carve incredible pieces of woodwork. I got started carving when I was a Boy Scout. And I did study art a little bit. I, I met a wood carver from, from Europe, from Portugal, that showed me how to use the tools. I was a commercial artist for about 13 years and ended up working at one of the larger advertising agencies in Evansville, Indiana, where I'm from. And then we came down here and on vacation several times and saw the craft community out here. Otto and his wife live upstairs above the shop. He loves the camaraderie of the community and has no plans to stop working with wood. It's one thing neat about, about having a shop like this. I, I have literally met people from all over the world in here. It's, it's amazing because not only am I doing what I like to do, but uh, I'm not in good old cubicle like I was in a, in a studio. I'm, I'm out talking with people. Probably one of the most special things about this arts loop is its diversity. You can find anything here from concrete works of art to stuffed bears, dulcimers, ceramics, paintings, glass, you name it, it's here. A little further up the loop, class is in session. Good morning, guys. I hear you want to create something in glass. Nancy Huff is an artist who specializes in fused glass. Glass that's been melted in a kiln at about 1400 degrees or higher, made into different projects. Nancy creates her pieces by carefully placing bits of glass onto a base piece and using heat to fuse it together. Vases, jewelry, night lights, dishes, sun catchers. The work is gorgeous. Originally from Gatlinburg, Nancy's dad grew up in the house that is now her Firefly Glass Studio and Gallery. 
After a 25-year career elsewhere as a mortgage loan officer, the lure of the arts community and home drew her back. I think it's just special because we're kind of all concentrated. It's just a, it's a simple eight-mile loop and people can go from place to place and they can find literally any form of art in this one eight-mile loop. Not only can you find and buy art, but you can actually make your own, like the Helsinger family from Ohio. The whole create your own experience is fairly new to the loop. Nancy was one of the first to offer it, but now many other artists offer a chance to experience what they do. As I started it back in uh, the spring of 2017, after our fires that previous November, it got really slow. Social media kind of told people Gatlinburg burnt to the ground. I was like, well, I don't want to go back into the workforce, so what can I do? And I had an actual lean-to building out with two picnic tables underneath it and started taking some of my scrap glass out there and asking people if they wanted to make their own item, and it has just exploded. Last year alone, 600 pieces went out of here. Whether you choose to let your own creative juices flow or just browse and buy, spending a day on this eight-mile loop is a perfect way to see a different side of Gatlinburg. I have people that have visited this area their entire lives, and they didn't know that the arts and crafts community existed. So it's important not only to educate people that we exist, but also to show them, you know, there is something outside of Gatlinburg that represents this very beautiful, idealistic version of what Gatlinburg used to be. Uh, we're not just a tourism town with flashing lights. We have some incredibly handmade items, even to see the arts and crafts loop. The beauty, the natural beauty of this area, hopefully people will come and visit us just as much as they want to come and visit the mountains.